Hey everyone, welcome back to the Spelt Siren Siren Streams. Today we have with us Mads, who is the Principal Developer Advocate at Div Riots. They are the makers of Backlight.dev, which is a design systems IDE built for designers and developers. We're going to be working with that today, building the beginning of a component library, and then trying to integrate that into a Spellkit project. So welcome Mads, we're so glad to have you today. How are you doing? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, awesome. We are super excited. So I guess we can go ahead and get started here if you're ready. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Switch over here to the right screen. And we're here on backlight.dev. So we're going to work on getting started and um, building a Svelte starter kit, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good okay. idea. Okay. So click on get started here, right? Yeah. Get started and you will be able to pick a, a starter kit, an existing starter kit. So we have different flavors of them. And yeah, we it have looks a, like you've got a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty happy because we, we rebranded the screen uh, recently and we now start with really small starter kits just to bootstrap your project, you know, not uh, yeah. big ones with a lot of, of components where you could be lost at some point. So it's a, it's a pretty good solution when you want just to start a new project. That makes a lot of sense and it looks beautiful. I love it. So we're going to do this felt starter kit, I'm assuming. Sure. Okay. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what we get bootstrapped here. All right. So it looks like we've got a little switch theme component and we're able yeah. to switch the theme, which there we go. Nice. Exactly. Okay. So you've got the, um, the idea with the editor is that you start with a simple starter kit where you've got a few components, few tokens, um, and some, some different parts. I probably need to revamp it a, a, a bit to make it more, more standard in, in the definition of a design system. But um, right now, it's perfectly, uh, perfectly able to, to do what you want with this. So it looks um, like we're using CSS variables here, or are these SAS variables? Yeah, I, I, um, I, I prefer, but, but this is really my opinion. I prefer to rely on SAS files because, um, you know, nesting is life, and we <laughs> we do the nesting at some point. So, okay, um, so that's so what I our tokens. Yeah, that, that's why the tokens are defined in, in SAS files. But um, in fact, there. are almost flat CSS files. So we, we could also use flat, flat CSS if we if we prefer, if, you, if we want. OK, I did notice that since you have them in SAS files and then here, well, I guess you're not using SAS in the style tags, though, right? Yeah, we could improve it this one. And we, we could start with this um, this very simple button and probably make it using the, the um, tokens coming from the, the, the SAS files and yeah. have it properly using the, the tokens defined in, in those files. OK, so we have the button right here. And these styles are scoped. So these are the styles that are applied to this button, right? We're not using any of those token files right now. Exactly. OK, so what should we do first to start that? So first thing, you have to duplicate the starter kit using the button uh, on the top to, to okay. use it in your very own space, because at first, we are just um, uh, displaying the static kit in the Div Riot's workspace, which is where okay. we, are, we are just gathering everything. Do I just so, click um, on duplicate, or do I, I click it to a workspace? You you make it as, as you wish, because um, the duplicate button is just offering you different workspaces. OK, so these are workspaces your previ, I've your previ, already yeah. created? Exactly. OK. So it's, it's really like a fork button in GitHub. OK, so there we go. So we duplicated that to the Backlight Svelte workspace now, which was something I've created. And we have just a similar thing here. I think it takes it a minute to catch up on the, oh, you got to press it twice. I think the first yeah, time it doesn't run. I, I, I think we've got a bug in this one, because um, I'm guessing that you are in a dark mode in your computer. Oh yep. Yeah. So uh, the, probably the detection at start of in, in the in the theme isn't properly handling the fact that you are by default in the dark mode rather than on the on the light one. But we should probably fix it uh, also if we've got in, enough time. 
that makes sense. Okay, so let's try to bring in some of those tokens here. So are we going to make this the lang equals SCSS? Yeah, good idea. Okay. And then I guess we do have to import the the theme directly that is um, holding all the, the different tokens into the, the button. So we would be able to style the button by using the, to the tokens uh, directly in it. Okay, so is that in the script tag? Um, I'm mm, I'm not sure. Um, we could import in the, in the script tag because um, in in the back we are using V to 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 power the rendering process. So uh, we could import it uh, right here, or we may rely on an import statement in the style instruction to import the SAS files. I don't know which one is the best. Um, do you have any any preference? Um, when I'm trying to import styles into a SAS file or into a Svelte file, I usually import it in the script tag. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we have a script tag and we need to close that script tag. And we just import and... and are we... Yeah, the file that we are trying to import in the, is the theme one, exactly, in the, in the theme package. So if you go to the into the theme package you will have um, the definition um, of the different tokens gathered in the uh, in the same place um, in the file exactly so we could import this file and there is a shortcut to to import it uh, you could do that like that or you could use a tilde to refer at, at the the root of the project yes that's it and then just a slash theme slash and slash. you're in the package. Yeah. Do we have to go into tokens or is it just slash theme? Um, um, in fact, no. Um, the tokens or parts or, or components are just sections in the editor, but um, uh, in the back, the, this is just a flat architecture when you've got a monorepo and each package is just a folder at the root level of the, of the monorepo. So, um, Gabriel was saying that they do it in the style tag. I've never seen it imported in the style tag. Can you show how you do that, Gabriel? Like down here, you do an at import? Yeah, uh, like, an at import, yeah. I'm pretty sure it should work. Can you use the same? Yeah, same syntax. Huh. Um, Let's try yeah. that. Yeah. We'll see if that works. Yeah, and then I so... probably need a, yeah. Yeah, you you need a slash between the tilde and the and the theme. A slash. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, just here, and um, because the file is not at the root level of the package, but is uh, in the the SSE folder um, in the package, you should have to to add it um, to append it in in your path. So probably something like slash src slash theme.scss um, after the, the theme. Uh, um, yeah. After the theme, and I just yeah. took away that. So after the theme, we need slash src slash, slash and the file name, which is um, theme.scss if I, if I remember. Theme.scss, OK. Yeah. Pretty sure it's something like that. All right. Now we can see if we can use one of those tokens here. Yeah. Let's make a okay. try. So let's see what we have in here. What could we pull for a color to try? Mm. Let's pick um, the SAS. Let's say the SAS color background just to make a simple test. OK. So here we can try doing SAS color background. Yeah. Is it um, background color? Uh, I guess it's just background. Is it just background? And we have to wrap oh. it in, in a in a var statement, oh. you know, to, because it's a it's a custom property. Oh, okay, yep. Great. Is it working or not? Um, it does have a different color. Sure, but is that the color that it's supposed to be? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, Let's see. Background color, light background color is. Can we do the color scheme dark one? Dark color background. 
What if we do that dark background? Does it automatically switch you over to dot? Um, it's supposed, but um, didn't work. sometimes, yeah, sometimes we, we should have, um, we may have some issues in the, with the refreshing process. So maybe. It looks like when I okay. put it in the var statement, it's not working. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it goes away. But yeah. if I oh. put it like this, oh, it works. I, you know what? I'm not, I'm not that sure because could you inspect the, um, the button in, in your uh, in your brother so we will see what is the real value in the in the dev tools so what do we have on the just so, white is what it's pulling it's not pulling yeah, okay the and not this one okay so and if we use a vast statement in it uh -huh. Okay, and what do we have? Now the, the button is gone, but let's see. Oh, yeah, no, it's not gone. still here, but... The, the background color. color is not set, so it's yeah, not recording. That's it. So why why isn't that set in it? Um, I wonder if this is not the correct... Um, should we try to do a, an absolute path? Let's try. Let's try with an absolute path. But okay, so is that up yeah. a folder? It's up. Um, it's up two folder. The first one you you are at the root of the button package, and then there's the one that you are at the root of the project. So okay, let's make a try like this. And then is it just theme again in the root, and then dot scss? Yeah, that's it. Let me just pick the the project on my side just to check it. Still not getting that there. So what about this theme? Oh yeah, because this uh, the file name is not, is not the right one. This is um, this is uh, so theme slash sse slash underscore themes dot scss. I missed the underscore as for, at first. Uh, can you say that one more time? So um, yeah, that's it. Uh, slash sse slash underscore theme. Dot underscore SCSS. theme. Yeah, we missed it. Well, let's so, try to put that tilde back. Yeah, let's try it. And that's slash, the correct path. Uh, with a slash just after the, the tilde. Oh, yep. Keep yeah, forgetting good. that slash. Oh, no, still not there. So, hmm, still not working. Um, So why? It's like just empty, and it's not loading the variable. Mm. I'm going to switch that back to the dot, dot, slash, yeah. dot, dot, slash. Let's try it. And... After that, we could probably make a test. Yeah, still okay. not there. Hmm. Let's try to. What about trying to import it um, in the script tag, like like you okay. wanted to do at first? Okay. Yeah, so the, the import instruction uh, needs to be updated. Oh. Yeah, and removing yeah the the at not the sass anymore. <laughs> yeah, not sass anymore. <laughs> okay, so arrow um, is not the modular. Okay, we're gonna try that. Dot, okay, dot, let's dot, try dot, that again. Dynamically imported module. Okay, what that? <laughs> hmm. That's weird, you know? Okay, so let me check it. Um, because Hmm. That's strange because. Yeah. <laughs> well, would we be able to create our own custom variables here, like say background color and make it blue and then use. Yeah, and use it here. Background color and just see if that yeah, works. Just remove this one. Just see. 
Identifier. Oh, I did He's something. Done. Yeah, I forgot my semicolon. <laughs> I'm bad with semicolons. Identifier is missing. Why? Oh, I've got too many of these. I don't know how that happened. Hmm. But but it should not complain at um <laughs> Do I need to have this in like a root? In the root? Yeah, maybe. It could be. Oh, I can't do the option thing. I'm used to VS Code at this point. There we go. Yeah, better. Okay. Oh, perfect. <laughs> cool. It's like I'm doing so, something wrong. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I... Oh, thanks, Kev. Uh, Kevin came up and said that right as I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, we, we, may, we may try to make um, uh, some test after that, just to be sure. I, I'm not sure why we, we couldn't um, load this specific um, style sheet from the theme, but I, I'm gonna make some tests on my side too. Okay, that sounds great. So we have this color working now with the props and we already have the switch theme component and things. Do we want to try to publish this to get this live so we could maybe try to install it in Spelt Kit? Yeah. Okay, do you wanna walk me through how to publish this component library? So we could you could publish it um, directly from Backlight using the, the small uh, package icon on the on the left toolbar. The left toolbar package icon, that one. Yeah, exactly. In fact, um, Backlight is just um, um, a brother ID that help you to develop your design system and have your stories, your tests, your documentation render in, at the same place, but. Uh, behind the hood, is, this is just um, a front end to a, a regular repository and something like this. So you could um, easily plug it to your uh, GitHub or GitLab uh, repository. So you could push and pull your uh, your code directly from and to it. And same thing for publishing, which means that if you want to use Backlight to improve your process and help you to just develop your design system, it would be fine, but if you prefer just to have your regular uh, code base, you, you're not locked into Backlight. You could, at any point, just uh, clone your uh, repository kind from your it. process and uh, yeah, and directly eject it. With yeah, a, that makes a lot of sense, but this gives you a nice visual IDE, like you said, to create your components with code, which I like. Yeah. That's that's exactly the the idea. The fact is, we are also working right now in a in a VS Code extension. So you oh, will nice. be able to code into VS Code and just have the the right side with the rendering and and the different stories, documentation tab, and so on, in, running directly into into your VS Code. So you're in your VS Code. You are you keep your same habits, but you have the rendering process from Backlight uh, embedded awesome. in it. Yeah, that's really great. That'll be it's, really uh, exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, almost stable, I guess. So, so, <laughs> so Perfect. maybe, maybe for a, a next episode. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, you could release it uh, by just clicking the release button and okay. um, just go in the in the configuration um, uh, panel. We just have probably to tick the include sources, so the Svelte file will be published into the package rather than just the compiled version. Which okay. would be easier to 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 include them after that in the Svelte project. That makes sense. Okay, and we don't need the typings. We're probably not going to use TypeScript today. Yeah, exactly. But if you use TypeScript, you you, you can include, include typings. Exactly. Perfect. And then we release, and this that's is it. a patch version of point three because I had installed this before, right? Yeah, that's it. So you could so just that's click the release button. And semantic versioning for anyone that doesn't know, you have the major release is one, the minor release is zero, and then our patch version is three. And so this is just a newer patch. It's not a breaking change or a major change. Yeah. or minor change rather. So this will just release a patch version of the package that I'd already published. Awesome. So we just have to wait a few few seconds just to NPM to 
Ivy I like that it's got book. the little visual there to show yeah. you, though, that it's working on something. And then it's got a little package. Yeah. Look at the little and, box. And you can click on it. And if you click on it, you, you will be directly redirected to uh, to NPM. And, and so you will be able to see your package Sweet. published in NPM. So um, Awesome. I'll go ahead and copy that. And everyone can go and see the nifty new package we just created. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let me see. Are we going to need backlight up? Oh, we we don't need it for uh, for the the Svelkid, um, include, but we can keep it uh, just uh, in case of you know. Okay. If we want to I'll keep it something. there and then make this big for now. And we're going to go idea. ahead and so we just start out with a brand new Svelkit project, right? Yeah. Okay. So npm and then Svelkit next. And we're going to call this backlight demo. And I create a new spelt project. We're going to do the skeleton project. We're not going to use TypeScript. And you know what? Today, I'm not even going to mess with the ESLint. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that. I saw that there was a new way that you can like do a slash R, but I have not gotten this to work yet. I'm going to try it, though. Backlight. So it goes into the same window at work? No, it didn't work. I'm just going to use code dot again. There's a way that you can do it so it just opens it in the same window, and I mm. can't figure out what the command is to run that. Okay, so here we are in our new Svelte kit project, so I need to install all the dependencies that come with that. I'm going to go ahead and run npmi. You can see we've got our new stuff in there. All of that's installed now. So now we need to install the package we just created, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. maybe we could just go back to that NPM package and copy this, but we're going to exactly. add that. Um, does it need to be a direct dependency or can it be a dev dependency? Uh, it could be a dev dependency because your um, your project will be will embed them and the different dependencies after that when you build the project and when you, de you deliver okay. the project, you know. So I went ahead and passed that dash capital D in there just to make that a dev dependency instead of a dependency that gets loaded with it. So now we've got that package in there and we can try to import this into something. So do you want to create, just try to throw it on the index page? Yeah, we could just create, um, just add the button in the, in the index page. Okay. So we first have to import the button in a script tag. So, so let's do an input. It's a named button. Um, um, let me check. I can't recall. Um, why did I do? It's uh, yeah, it's it's a name. It's a named export. So um, so between curly braces. And um, yeah, and your your path to the button will be your package name, so the same one that you have in, in the package JSON file. So, okay, um, so what did we... Oh, in the package.json. Yeah. Said. Let's pull those separate so yeah. we can see what so it says. It, so, it, um, so at backlight. At backlight. And it's... Is it there, that one? Yeah, exactly. That's Sometimes auto yeah. is Perfect. really good. Okay, and so now so, we've got a button. Yeah. I know we are looking for the button, so we need to to add um, uh, some extra to open some extra path to the to the import path. So it's a it's a slash um, slash button. Okay, so, so we need to go slash uh, in SSE, and, and we'll be ready to pick the yeah exactly. Okay, I see what we're doing. So we're actually going and finding that component in that tree. That's why we included that source there. Exactly. If you, if we just to to have a look at the, the non-module um, directory, and if we look at it, this is just a, a flat architecture. You know, in the head backlight uh, folder, you've got access. Um, yeah, nice. So in add nice backlight, and make for yeah. everybody where I can't yeah, read exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> So finally, so there we can actually pull open our button and see. Yeah, which is exactly what we have in backlight. So it's uh, yeah. it's not um, it's not uh, we we don't do any any kind of magic, you know, when we publish uh, things. We are just compiling the the component into the dist folder, but uh, because we ticked the the include sources, we also have access to the the SSE folder from the package. So you've got access to everything. You you also have your stories in it. You 
could have also your documentation if you have one. So um, so yeah, it's it's pretty useful when you are you know just importing your design system into your final project. You've got access to everything from your design system into your project. So um, so sometimes it's easier to to just to deal with it. I like where you can add the documentation alongside it too, and mm. it makes it nice. And there's that visual. But once you get all of that into VS Code too, and that extension, I think it's going to be really cool to just create everything right here in VS Code. Yeah. Sounds awesome. So we should just be able to see this if we save that right and then run our server. Crossing fingers, but I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Oh, okay. Well, no, okay. To, I'm going to make it a little smaller yeah, so I can read what it says. Um, Import button. Let's try it from without. Virtual, let, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just me that. Yeah, oh. yeah no, you're right. We don't need the curly braces. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Are you opening and I just can't? Yeah, okay. We opened two of them, but there's our button. Yeah. Nice. So that was fairly straightforward. Yeah. And it's I mean, not... then you could like, for now you could come over here and you could iterate on whatever you wanted to do and add more things to it. Could we try to look at maybe some documentation, add some documentation and republish it and see what happens? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, to do so, you just have to go back to your, um, your tree view um, by clicking the little files on the on the top in the top bar. Yeah, exactly. So um, in the button package um, at the top of the editor view, you've got access to a, a tabs um, for the the just above this one. You've got the SSE, which is the source folder, but you also have the stories um, oh, just right on your there. right. Yeah, exactly. There so we go. you could define so... your stories here. You could define your test, your documentation. You could also okay. add some kind of design. So is this using different... Storybook? This is exactly as a Storybook format. So okay. we are not using Storybook um, behind the hood. So we have our um, Hound uh, renderer for the stories. But this is the, the, the plain uh, component stories format from Storybook. OK, cool. I was like, this looks very familiar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. And All right. The, so with this, we would create our documentation, though, yeah. on the doc side. So you could add a new file, exactly. Okay. And you could create your documentation with um, anything you want. So we could generally... What's convention we, for calling a doc? I guess that the good documentation is something that is easy to read and easy to contribute. So the markdown format is probably the best one. So we could simply create an index.md file to create a, a new markdown file. Because it's already in a button folder, so it's going to be associated with that button component, right? Exactly. OK, so we're do, just doing index.markdown. Just it. Yeah, OK. Oh, and we could and start by adding exactly a button. And we've got just button, set. and we could click over here to see what that looks like. Exactly. This is the button component. And I mean, you can add like markdown in here, right? It is blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we can go and reiterate on that by republishing this and we would be able to get this documentation. Is there a way to actually get like the stories and the docs and all of that into SvelteKit? Yeah, you could you could accept them because when you publish the, um, the package, we because we ticked the include sources, we also include in the package the stories and the documentation and so on. So you've got okay. access to it in the in the user folder. Already have the story because that was yeah. automatically generated, right? Exactly. So oh here, stories, index okay. stories, and yeah. there's our button story. Look at that. So we do already have access to that. Now, do you have to have storybook or since you said you're not using traditional storybook you don't have to have storybook installed to see that though right no you you it's it's not um it's not mandatory you could just switch back onto backlight and have a preview of your stories into backlight if you want but if you prefer to because i don't know your own organization have its own storybook uh, instance you could directly import those stories directly into your own storybook and it will run uh, 
perfectly smoothly because okay. this is just a storybook format. Okay. So if we did have storybook installed, then we could probably just run that file. But for yeah. now, it's not able to be ran locally. It would just have to be run through Backlight. Am I understanding that right? Okay. So let's republish this and see if we can see our documentation then. Would that be the same for the documentation or would we be able to see those in SvelteKit? It would be, it would be exactly the same in, in for the documentation. We, we will just publish um, the, the MD file without touching it. Okay. Is So is there a way to, do you just release the entire thing again? It just releases the button and does it take care of the versioning and all of that for you? Yeah. Exactly. If you click the, the release button, the version will be will be incremented. It just you know? patches it automatically. So what if we exactly. made a breaking change? You could just uh, have to click on the on the selector on the right side of the, the model. Oh, and box. you, just, and you could... have to kind of maintain exactly. that. Exactly. And everything will be updated uh, depending on the, the version that you, you select. That makes sense. Okay. And here we are still including sources, and we just want to release 1.04. And we'll get that going. This is just such a nice UI for publishing and being able to see and just go straight to NPM. I, oh, Thank that you. one didn't like it. Yeah. Maybe just uh... wonder what happens if I come. Oh, there. It's... Yeah, sometimes there is a, a little lag. It just lag takes a little bit of a lag. Registry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's the new link for everyone. We have 1.0.4 now. Now we can copy this again. Now we've already got it installed to bump that package. Do we need to do it just in the package JSON here and yeah, reinstall? We could, or can you, we just run npmi again? We could run npmi if you if you want to it install it. it. Yeah. I don't think it did. I think but I don't think yeah, but if you run a, an npm update, um oh okay, let's try that. It will be probably updating the package. Oh, someone has a question. Um, Cal said, would the button component have the same IntelliSense a regular HTML button would have or just the props your component exposes? Zach's an, ex uh, an excellent question. Um, thank you for that. Um, the fact is, we are not directly exposing the properties and the final IDE like VS Code won't be able to, to have access to the properties, except if we are developing our components using TypeScript and we're exporting the typings with it, you know. But um, an interesting thing is that there is this um, standard that is a custom element manifest, which is um, a way to declare the associated properties um, and, uh, and um, you know, events and attributes and so on associated to a specific component. And this standard, no, this format, because it's not right now for a standard, but this format will be um, able to be, to be handled by the different editors to help you to, to have some kind of auto completions and so on. Um, the fact is, is that right now we, we have, two different formats. We, we've got um, the component elements manifest, and we've got uh, the web types that are coming from WebStorm. So WebStorm has their very own format for their very own editor, but they're more or less the same like, kind of definition and the same kind, because it's just JSON files. <gasps> um, that worked. <laughs> I just wanted to see if that would work, and I'm so happy it did. <laughs> So with style props, we can pass a new variable with spelt into that, and it just worked. I'm so excited. <laughs> Congrats. That was probably a little overkill <laughs> on the excitement level, but I need some, like, learn with Jason, like, cheers and things. Like, oh, my God, that just worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is it. so cool. That's it, We're going to yeah. just keep changing. Oh, what's some cool colors? Let's do teal. Yes, sirens colors. Awesome. Okay, so now let's. I've reinstalled. So npm update still didn't grab one point zero point four. So I had to go into the package JSON and just explicitly tell it to grab four, and then I reinstall. Hmm. So I should have my documentation somewhere in here now. 
and yeah. there we go yeah in the docs so is that something we can load into the spelt kit file to see um we could load it like uh, any 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 markdown file so um as long as you can embed in your project but not only so, delicate, but any kind of project, as long as you can embed in a, a Markdown file, you can embed your documentation in it. Yeah, so you would need something like Remark, or we might use yeah. MD Specs for something like that. Okay, so we would need something to parse the Markdown and show it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, anything else we need to show off here? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe there is something that, that we, we, could, um, we could see. Um, each time we made um, a change in the design system in Backlight, we had to republish it to have it available in, in the final application. But often when you are working on your application, you are also working in the design system because you are making some adjustments or some improvements in the design system. If you have to republish it each time, this is not really, really easy to do so, you know. So um, we've got something to help you in this process. Um, awesome. at, in the top bar of the editor on the on the, the right side, you've got a, um, a button with a little antenna on it. Um, yeah, just this one. If you click on it, it will open a model and you've got access to a command. If you copy this command and you run this command into your, uh, your Svelkit project, Yes. So MPX is going to run that package without installing it. That's what that is doing. And this link is NPM link, correct? Exactly. It's me it means that you don't have to republish your uh, design system each time you are changing it, which means that you don't have to increment the the version in in the registry and pollute your registry with a lot of just, you know, tries. Uh, when you try to, to just update your design system. You could do it, link your, the project directly into your, uh, your Svelkit project and have it live in your, um, in your application. So you could um, that is keep really the default beneficial. shows. So yeah. you can test it out in your actual code to see and like do... Exactly. Yeah. So here with NPM dedupe, do you have a way that you usually go? Yes or you no? You could keep the, the default um, and not running the dedupe. I'm, so no? Yeah, no it is, is always a good choice. It's, okay. it's up to you and depending to your project, but by default, no is probably the best answer. Awesome. So finally, what it is doing in the back is that it's uh, gathering the, the content of your design system locally and running the compilation step, which is exactly the same thing that we the, the editor is doing when you publish the package, except this time it's just it just done on your local environment and then it runs an npm link command on it and you will get access to the um, to the design system into, into your project nice which means right now your svelkit application it's supposed to still work i guess so <laughs> okay so I, we did the npm link so it should be linked directly to the backlight instance now and yeah. now I have my dev server running on localhost 3000. So if we go over to Backlight and we change our button, trying to figure my way back around, let's try changing this to black. Yeah, so in the story, okay, this, this is a black version, okay. In this one, we have to remove the, the custom property from the Svelkit um, yeah. include because it, it overrides uh, the setting. But we we still have the blue version because we made the change on Backlight, but we, we, the link um, between Backlight and your local project is not live. So we have to rerun the link command um, in, uh, in, in uh, our ID just to, to update it but we don't have to republish it. We just have to remade the link in the local project. Okay. So how do we run this again in the local yeah, project? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Whoops. There is also um, well, I'm a getting way all to... Of that. We, ha we did have another question. What is the best place to send someone for marketing to see what design components are available and how they work, et cetera? Oh, from, from the, um, the marketing side, I guess the backlight editor is probably the best, um, the best way to, yeah. We didn't publish it, but that worked, yeah. 
Um, if you can go back into backlight, um, I will show you about this this um, this famous uh, thing. We know we are we are in the um, the code view, so we've got access to um, the file system of the, the package tree and the editor and the rendering process. But if you click on the on the review button at the top, yeah, just yeah, exactly. You are closing the editor, which means that we could easily just share this kind of URL to the marketing people or product people just to help them to get access to only the previews and the documentation. They still have access to the, to the list of the different elements, but it hides the code side. So it's probably better just to have an overview of what is available and so, so on. This is a live URL. I can link that out to people and they could go and see this, correct? Yeah, exactly. And if you click on, on the on the little button just uh, um, just on the right side, yeah, this one, it will just copy the live URL, oh. which means that you could send this URL to any kind of people. And each time you may change in your design system, their view will be updated as well. So they don't have to that touch anything. Incredible. I think the link is, yeah, it just copies the link for you. That is such a nice little feature. Yeah. So and if you click on the on the doc tab uh, just uh, near it uh, near the the review one um it's another view mode uh, on the top um the top bar oh i'm sorry yeah there exactly then so that has one it, as well. it hides everything and you get access only to the docs tabs and if you are building your documentation with a, a navigation to help you to navigate across the different kind of buttons and different kind of elements, then your documentation is live into Backlight. But because this is just, um, you know, markdown files, we could easily also extract them and build a mini site with a, with a static generator, like, I don't know, 11T or whatever you want. So we could extract and publish a documentation site outside of Backlight if we want. Awesome. So you could take that and put it somewhere else if you needed to. Yeah, okay. perfectly. So but I just wanted to go and update my docs. How do I get back to that? Here it is. Yeah, that's it. Black now. OK, want to, sh want to see something um, something fun too? Um, the fact is that the Mardon file, do we have enough time? Yeah. Um, the mm -hmm. fact is um, the Mardon files aren't just uh, plain Markdown in the documentation tab, but they are Markdown with JavaScript, which means that we could, we could embed JavaScript into the Markdown files um, seamlessly, which- We were talking about this the other day on your stream. Is this, yeah. did we integrate MD specs or something? Uh, it's not MD specs right now. It's okay. uh, something else called, uh, called MDGS. Um, we are still working on the MD specs implementation, but <laughs> yeah. But okay. um, the the MDGS is available for any kind of Markdown file into your folder. So oh, if you awesome. if you use the the, the three backticks with the, the GS markup, yeah, with just the GS G um, definition. G GS. G yeah, no, uh, like JavaScript, you know. Oh, J JS. Okay, J yeah, sorry. JS. Okay. <laughs> And no, no, it's, it's it's me. My my accent is terrible, you know. Oh no, your <laughs> accent is fantastic. Don't feel so bad. I... But I'm French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the so, three back text. So this is just creating yeah. a code block. Yeah, in exactly. We have a code block. So if we put something like, um, let's say, import button from, and we will try to import our Svelte button into the Markdown file. So it will be a dot dot slash SSE slash uh, button dot svelte. Uh, if I could type it, there we go. Okay. So if we run this one, we will have a regular code block in the doc tab. So if you go to the doc tab, okay, we've got okay. that. So that import. tells you how to import. So if we wanted to say like import statement. Yeah. Okay, now let's use the same code block, but after the the, um, the GS instruction, just suffix it with a, a script instruction, you know? So just copy past this block. So we will keep this one for the, for okay. the sake of the demo, yep. but... Okay, cool. 
and after the GS, just um, in, in in your in your uh, opening code block, you have the tick 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 slash uh, tick 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 GS space script. Okay. Yeah, and we will put the same import button from um, dash dash uh, dot dot. Oh, slash okay. Button Sorry, well. I removed that. Yeah, that's not time. Okay. Okay, so if we run this one, we don't have the code block that is uh, appearing because this script suffix says, okay, this is a script, uh, JavaScript instruction into Markdown. So we won't render it, but we use it uh, as a script instruction, like a regular JavaScript into the Markdown file. Okay, so let's do the same right now with the, um, uh, we, we will open a new code block with the same uh, GS instruction, but this time we will happen um, the suffix uh, preview uh, dash story. S T O R Y story? Exactly. Okay. Preview story. Exactly. And if you go back to your, uh, your stories uh, tab, we will just copy a simple story from it, like a, a export const. Uh, the first one or the oh, second the first one. one? If you oh, the one, the one you prefer. There's, there's no. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And OK. OK, let's try to run it just to see. Yeah, we've got Ooh, it. Look at that. So we've got a preview of Storybook directly embedded into our Markdown file. And this is using the direct imported button from the GS script code block just above. OK, so this is importing the button. Yeah, into your and then Markdown this file. is the story that yeah. creates this block here. Exactly, which means that your documentation is now live. Each time you will update your component, your documentation will be uh, updated as well, just because it's dynamically imported from your code base. That's awesome. Incredible. So someone, uh, Brian was asking about the SvelteKit package process, talks about building a demo doc site in routes that you can build a demo with your components, then only the lib folders packaged and published. So we actually did a talk on this for Svelte Sirens. It was the very first talk that I gave back in, I think it was October of last year. So if you search for building design systems with SvelteKit, you will see exactly what that is talking about. And that is correct, that you can build your component library in Svelte, use the Svelte kit package command, and it will get all of your lib folder into a package for you. And you're able to publish that to NPM, similar to what Backlight here is handling for you. Yeah, we should we should have a look to that because um, maybe we could find a way to directly, you know, import the doc files from the, the Backlight package directly into the, the Svelte kit package documentation. Something like using aliases or something like that. So It's really simple. I like the IDE format just because you get, I mean, you would get it with the hot module reloading with Svelte Kit too, but this has like the stories integrated and the documentation integrated without actually having to bring all of that to your Svelte Kit project. It just depends on the implementation that you want, your, the route you want to go. So I think either way works and whatever works best for you and your team is what you can choose. Yeah, exactly. The idea for us, we, we, we really don't want to lock people in Backlight and at any point. We just want to help people to have a better tools to develop their design system. But this is always the same thing. We are still using the regular technologies, the standard one, and, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So um, this is just a kind of sugar and, and existing design system practices. I really like that. And I feel like I understand a lot better about the capabilities of Backlight now and being able to go through all of the different steps and the different levels. It's really got depth to it more than just like you see the code editor IDE and you think it's just a simple like bringing a Svelte project to the IDE in the browser, but it's not. It's got the documentation and the stories there and lots of things that you can do to integrate all of those together. Bringing hmm. that story into the docs was just magic. I yes. love a little bit of magic in my life. <laughs> I need some magic. <laughs> we all need that. We all need that. <laughs> so is there anything else we need to talk about with Backlight? Anything we forgot to mention? 
Oh, um, where I don't know. We're working a, a lot on new features because um, for new for for us, the idea is not that just uh, being a, a kind of um, glorified storybook uh, or new something uh, fancy stuff, but we 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 really do want to. Um, improve the way people are working with their own design system. So we we, we demoed that it works with Velt, but it works also with a lot of technology. We're totally agnostic of any kind of technology that you want to use for your design system. So um, so uh, what next? Um, the, for the next week, for me, uh, it will be definitely dedicated to improve this Velt this Velt starter kit because uh, because I need to revamp a lot of things in it, especially importing the theme, you know. So uh, I will fix that and um, and yeah. yeah I'm excited have, um... to see the theme working because that would be really cool to have that in there automatically, like a yeah. component ready for you with a theme. Well, thank yeah, you sure. so much for joining us, everyone. We have in two weeks on February 16th, James Q. Quick is going to be showing us Planet Scale database and how to integrate that into SvelteKit. So awesome. we will catch you then. It's at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are five hours behind GMT. So what is that? Four, 1600 GMT? Um. I, I guess so. I, I'm at plus one. So, um, I'm so bad so, at time zones. Yeah, me too. I, I, I'm totally lost at some point. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, something like that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was so glad to have you, Mads. Thank you so much for coming on and showing me Thank more you. about Thank Backlight. Thank you for having I me. It. I love that everything just worked out so well today and we were able to get it integrated. And thank you everyone for coming and joining us. I hope you had a good time and you learned something today and we will see you next time. Later. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.